Good morning, good morning, good morning. I guess I'm on the right side of the truck now. Did I get everything worked out? Somebody said, here's how my brain doesn't process information very well. Somebody said, hey Josh, you're on the right side of the truck now. And I went, oh God, I tried to fix it because I thought you meant right hand side of the truck when you meant correct side of the truck. And there was a whole thing in my head, like I was looking through my settings going, how do I fix this? What do I change? I've changed everything. Um, <laughs> so uh, when you said I was on the right side of the truck, uh, you meant I was on the correct side. Uh, I appreciate you. <laughs> It's a problem in my brain. So uh, real quick before I get into things, thank you guys so much. I We're up nearly to 600 subscribers. Wow. Wow. Thank you guys. Thank you for giving me a chance. I appreciate it so much. So I uh, just wanted to make sure I say that at the beginning of the video because sometimes I'll be 20 minutes into it and I'll be like, hey, thanks guys. Beginning of the video, thank you so much to everyone that's subscribing, a bunch of familiar familiar faces. I was going to say old faces. <laughs> that wouldn't be very nice of me, would it? Um, familiar faces from the old channel. Um, a lot of help from uh, various uh, YouTubers, Will Burner Express, uh, James Best, um, uh, uh, Wildbeard, um, uh, Dominique, the dump truck driver, but she uh, helped when I was doing more reaction videos, but still nonetheless, thanks to her. She's got a huge channel now. Um, uh, uh, Oh, she changed her name, I think, the Kindred Trucker. Um, I know I'm going to forget someone. Um, um, and, of course, uh, Just Trucking for uh, letting me uh, jump on a video with him real quick. I only had a few minutes, and he made it work. We got it done. Uh, and I know I forgot someone in that. So uh, thank you to everyone that's uh, helping uh, kind of spread the word and rebuild the channel. That is super cool to me. So I am up. It's 7.41 a.m. right now. Um, I am 232 miles from my destination um, that delivers at 4 p.m. <laughs> so I'll explain there's a reason to that. But uh, honestly, should be a fairly uh, boring day, uneventful for the most part. We've got uh, Hartford, Connecticut, um, and then we've got the uh, loop around Boston. A um, couple reasons I'm up so early, though, is things do tend to move slower in the Northeast. So uh, might as well get a jump on it get, if I get there four hours early. I get there four hours early. I know I'm not reloading today, so who cares, right? Um, and for me, I absolutely hate being late. It drives me crazy. Uh, it's a very expensive thing for a truck driver to do to be late to a uh, pickup or delivery appointment. It, it can cost you a lot of money by the time uh, they get done with you. So... Um, uh, and this is uh, going to a grocery warehouse um, that has a very strict appointment time. Anybody that's delivered to grocery warehouses know that they are adamant about their appointment times. And there, are, as much as I hate being late, there is nothing that uh, grocery warehouses hate more than truck drivers. Uh, <laughs> they, if you're late for their appointment, they will make you pay for it. Uh, you guys remember growing up, you'd get in trouble and uh, your your mom, your dad, your parents, whatever, would uh, make you sit and stare at the wall and think about what you've done. That's what grocery warehouses will do, but on a much larger scale. You showed up 10 minutes late, <laughs> you're going to be here a while, son, and they're going to make you sit there until you've thought about every mistake you ever made in your life that led you up to this point where you are now sitting at this warehouse house and you haven't even been issued a door and you showed up 13 hours ago. Uh, they will push you to your breaking point till you're on the phone with your wife saying, I'm sorry, baby. I wish I knew of a better way to make money because I never would have done this. And they like to play head games with truckers is what I'm telling you. And I think they enjoy it. Uh, they probably got hidden cameras around the place watching truckers cry in their, in their driver's seat. Go, oh, if I could have just got up 10 minutes early, I would have made it. And they, uh, it's psychological warfare. <laughs> and they always win. The house always wins. Uh, you can go in there and scream and shout and throw stuff, whatever you want to do. Only going to make it worse for you. You cannot win if you're a little bit late to a grocery warehouse. So um, I hate being late anyways. Um, I 
have on in my trucking career i have only been late like maybe two times ever um and uh the message was received loud and clear on those times that i was late it's going to cost you a lot of money uh i was a company driver then so you're talking about 100 200 because they're going to make you miss your next appointment uh because you were late but when you start getting into lease operator and owner operator uh you could be putting thousands on the line just by being late to an appointment so don't do it is my point don't do it uh do everything in your power to not be late we're gonna be about four hours early uh hoping i'll get up maybe past um hartford and uh start looking for a pilot on the way because i would love to shower today definitely try to make time for that every day sometimes it gets chaotic and you miss a day and those are not fun days not fun days uh speaking of today gonna be a pretty straightforward boring day not a whole lot to it um, but you know what I've always said in trucking um, what you want is a boring day because when things are getting too exciting that's when you're not having a good day in most cases um, I remember an exciting a very exciting night one time uh, where I was on a mountain in a traffic lane with uh, cars driving around me uh, putting on chains not my fault chain laws had not went into effect that storm kind of caught everyone off guard. We knew it was coming, but we didn't know it was just going to dump on us in a matter of minutes. Um, exciting day. Not a good day. So uh, I have probably thousands of examples like that where uh, a nice boring day in trucking is the day you want. It's uh, much better that way. You can just enjoy the day, kick back, relax, because excitement always means bad news out here. <laughs> always 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 so anyways that's all i got to say for now i'm gonna uh get everything ready to go um i thought about like walking around showing you guys a pre-trip but eh, today i wasn't feeling it i'm not saying that i never will and i'm not gonna go out there and explain like this is what you're checking this is what you're doing you just be walking around the truck with me while i talk about whatever nonsense uh is in my mind but today wasn't the day um so uh yeah just really cool of all you guys to uh, subscribe and watch and uh, give me another chance for those of you coming from my old channel um, you know I was kind of dealing with um, at the time uh, I'm not afraid to talk about like mental health issues which is a big deal in trucking and especially over the road trucking and uh, I was dealing with a lot of that in my own head in my old channel where sometimes I was just off the deep end and uh, I will try to express that in a more adult manner more uh, mature manner this time around uh, because there will be days it's over the road trucking baby there will be days where it's just like oh get me out of my own head um but uh um it it means a lot to see returning viewers giving me another chance here on this platform because i know sometimes crazy people know they're crazy okay it's not like a surprise to us we're like what oh, we're aware we're aware that there's a lot going on up here and not good a lot of screws loose uh so to speak so anyways i'll jump off here for a bit i'm gonna go ahead and uh start my pre-trip and uh we'll roll out of here at about eight o'clock and we'll get over to uh maine somewhere and hope we get some content out of today because it might be a little bit boring <laughs> look at me chubby boy look you can see my nipples through my shirt it's at least a b cup now dang chunky the reason I'm recording this is because there's always the argument, what's better, Loves, Flying J, TA? People actually think TA is a nice truck stop. But this is going to settle the argument right here and now. Because I don't know what you guys, what do you guys like about Loves, the casket, casket showers? Bruh. <laughs> Pilot, that's where it's at, baby. That's where it's at. going to see if I can get them to... Uh, Give me a sponsorship. But what are you guys talking about? Loves TA. <laughs> yeah. This chunky boy needs to get a shower. See y'all later. Okay, I take back what I said. <laughs> I take back everything I said about the uh, nicer showers at Flying J. Sure, they look nice. Oh, they look real pretty. Oh yeah, then you get in there. And it's a nightmare. I don't know what is going on with the 
Flying J showers and the constant changing water temperature that is prevalent in every Flying J out there. You're enjoying yourself, you're splashing around, covered in soap, just having a good time. And then you hear the da 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 da, and that, that's the pipes banging against the wall. That's my impression of that. And then you hear dispense the lava and then you get sprayed with just scalding hot water but don't worry it's gonna change to ice cold any minute want to look around the truck stop with me for a minute um so yeah i don't know what i don't know who the guy is they hired though it's got to be the same guy <laughs> running around all the flying jays installing their plumbing but every one of them is the same you hear the rattle of the pipes and then you burn to death and then uh, ice cold for a minute after that. And that is always the case, no matter which one you go to. So I did enjoy the shower. Uh, it is, uh, I don't know how to say it. Like it is unacceptable <laughs> that in this day and age, we still have uh, to be very grateful for when we get a nice shower in a truck stop. You know, when we get a good one, because they're not always good. And well, I'm clean now, and I smell better. But I think I have burns <laughs> on the back of my neck, <laughs> and almost fell over trying to run from the hot water. <laughs> so anyways, that was not a whole lot of fun. But uh, I don't know, man. I guess that's just uh, way of the road, bub. It's the way she goes. So <laughs> anyways, we are now about... oh. My uh, GPS resets randomly, but not very often, like once a week. So it's doing that as we speak. But we are, uh, I'd say about 130 miles away now. We only went about 100 miles so far, but this was the last Flying J on my route. Somewhere in uh, Massachusetts, right as you cross into it. Uh, nice truck stop, actually. It looks brand new. Um, and a uh, big lot, big parking lot. Uh, so not a bad flying J at all but it was the last one before I get there and I wanted to uh, make sure I shower today and I've got enough fuel I imagine I'll be coming down the same way I didn't look at diesel prices when I came in but I got enough fuel in the truck to get up to where I'm going get unloaded get reloaded and probably make it back here um, and I'm just gonna throw like 50 gallons or so in for wherever I'm going uh, just to get out of here and get into hopefully cheaper fuel prices because like I said I didn't please drive check. to highlighted route yeah I get it I get it um let me let me get this thing calm down here um anyways uh <sighs> what am I trying to say that thing really distracted me oh I'll probably just get enough to uh you know get me out of here and into cheaper fuel prices and we'll go to from there so I'm gonna head out uh to Maine like I said, and, um, going to 205 Spencer Drive, Wells, Maine. Well, I've just doxxed myself, <laughs> so that's exactly where I'll be tonight. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's how it goes. Um, so yeah, 135 miles to get over there. Uh, I'll talk to you guys a bit more when we're there. Um, and once again, thank you all for, uh, enjoying the new videos and hanging out with me. I appreciate you so much. Hope uh, you non-truck drivers got to enjoy your little inside view of a uh, truck stop. Uh, we'll see you soon. Now this is an interesting drive back here in the, the forest, <laughs> back here in the woods, going to make our uh, delivery. We are, like I had predicted, three hours early, um, but this place does not open until four. So that's why you see all the trucks parked on the side of the road and I have a 4 p.m. appointment myself. So I think I'm just gonna find me a nice quiet spot on the side of the road too where it's not leaning too much in the dirt because I don't like feeling like the truck's gonna tip over. But uh, I always, uh, I just cannot get over how fascinate, fascinated I am with this part of the country. It's just such a different world than, than out west. You know, you're coming back to a distribution center right well out west you're gonna see all of them around you right over here you're just going to see trees everywhere and I may have went too far I guess I'm gonna go ahead and pull up here and uh, see if they'll let me check in we just may be sitting here all day um, we'll see how it goes but I uh, was hoping to just find a place to uh, 
park and maybe I should have parked sooner. I'll see what they say. Maybe they got a place I can park inside here once I'm checked in, but uh, I'm here. <laughs> I, I have made it and uh, we are about to apparently check in. Um, and uh, they might just turn me around. If they do that, then I'll park on the side of the road, wait a few hours. If they let me park inside here, that would be even better. So let me do that. I don't wanna put this poor girl on camera without her knowledge of it. So uh, I'll get checked in and we'll talk a little more in a few minutes. All right, we have made it. Oh, I love it, I love it. Uh, what a day, uh, what a good day, to be honest with you. We got up here, we got, uh, parked uh i'm three hours early and uh just waiting for them to call so i'm good with it because i'm tired man i'm old and i'm tired and after i record this and use the rest of the energy i got for your entertainment purposes probably take a nap probably pass out i do oh i do need to do schoolwork um i've been really bad about delaying it to the last day every week and i got most of it done uh, for this week, but it's due tonight at midnight Arizona time. So uh, maybe when they put me in a door, I'll go ahead and get the internet fired up and the laptop and get that done. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we're gaining a lot of, uh, obviously, the uh, people that used to hang around the old channel. Good to see you guys again. Love you all. Um, but we're gaining a lot of uh, new new people, uh, probably mostly from the uh, little just trucking uh, hangout we got to do. So thanks to him again. Um, and uh, yeah, for those of you that don't know, I'm in school for a computer science degree, but I, I'm doing it. I, I got a 4.0. I have 15 credits out of 120 credit degree, I believe. Um, holding the 4.0, but it's just so god-awful boring to me right now. I'm in a class that I really don't care about. Um, it's my uh, English 201. I did English 101 as one of my first classes, and I just don't care about stuff like that. It's like, just drag myself through it and go through the motions, you know. Um, I wish when we uh, went for degrees, they were all that time was spent with things that were relevant to that degree specifically. Sure, I should probably know English and how to write stuff as if I were to be a computer programmer and things like that, but I don't know how relevant maybe the 201 class is. Let's do with 101. Let's do that. And uh, we don't, do we really need to worry about English 201? Do we? I'm not really sure that we do, but uh, I'm just kind of trying to drag myself through that. That class just started. All the classes are five weeks long. And I'm on week one and I just, ugh, makes my stomach turn every time. I'm like, I better do my schoolwork. Ugh, just get me through to some interesting classes. Good Lord. Uh, but you know what? We'll, we'll get through it. I mean, we either will or we won't, right? <laughs> so uh, we'll see how that all plays out over time. But I just do not like this class even a little bit. It's like cite your sources. And if you don't do it right, then we're going to tell you how to cite your sources. I will never, ever do that in my life. I don't anticipate I'll be any kind of journalist or writer or anything like that. Um, but maybe, I guess maybe I need to know how to do that. I don't know, but that's my tangent about school. Um, but we made it. And, uh, the girl at the, uh, uh, guard shack, she was so sweet. It warms my heart to see, um, nice people working in the transportation industry because it's such a messy industry. Um, and everybody takes it personally and people get angry and upset. And she was just so sweet. I, I told her I'm like three hours early and she's like, well, go up there and park. They might be a while before they call you, but you're here. <laughs> so that's good news. Um, so that was very nice. I, um, I don't like dealing with angry people. It's like, come on, man. Um, we're all kind of going through it. Everybody in this business, it, it, what, however you're related to this industry is dealing with, uh, for lack of a better term, what a pain in the ass it can be, you know? So it was really uh, nice. That was cool of her. But uh, speaking of angry people, I got flipped off by a lady driving a car today. Um, I, uh, if you guys know me, I don't much care for uh, the truck and term four wheeler. That's it just, eh, it's, I don't like it. I just never have been a fan. So I don't use it. Um, I don't call cars four wheelers, uh, anything like that. Um, I just, I don't know what it is about it that bothers me, but uh, for the new people here, <laughs> you'll find that I'm very quirky sometimes. Uh, I remove words from my vocabulary just because like the sound of them is, uh, gross to me, if that makes sense. Makes me feel nauseous uh, with certain words. Uh, 
nauseous makes me feel nauseous also. <laughs> but um, I just sort of uh, avoid words that I don't like how they sound. Um, I, I'm such a weird dude, if I'm being honest with you. But um, this lady's over here watching me record. Um, she she seemed very nice too, though. She's a trucker. She was all smiles, smiles looking at me. Um, uh, probably not related because um, my face isn't that good. I can promise you that. Can promise you that. But anyways, I was um, just leaving this morning around that Fairfield, Connecticut area. And um, I understand this part of the country is smaller. So the on-ramps to the interstate are just on. <laughs> like they're just from the side of the road to you got to go. You got to merge right now. Um, and uh, so everybody's trying to merge and... Um, for me, there was just not, I don't have many opportunities to move over to the left lane. I will every time if I can, I'll move over lane and let traffic in, but you just don't have those opportunities, right? Um, that puts the person in the car or whoever the person is trying to merge on the interstate. Um, what you need to understand that I think most people understand it is, it is your responsibility to merge into traffic. Um, traffic should not have to slow down for you. Um, or even move for you, but it is a polite thing to do in a truck, especially move over if you can, right? But I couldn't. There was no way for me to do it. I had the blinker on. Nobody was giving me any room over here. Um, I can't very well be slamming on my brakes at every on-ramp so that people can get on the interstate. That's not how interstates work. They're designed for people to keep moving. And uh, so sure enough, she uh, rides right by my door, laying on her horn, and then lets off the gas and has to get him behind me and I saw her come all the way around my truck and uh step on the gas and I'm like I know what's coming she's leaned across her seat flipping me off instead of paying attention to the road like she should have been doing in the first place and I never ever ever hardly ever pull this string right here hardly ever that's the air horn for anybody that's not sure I make it a point to not use my air horn and be aggressive on the road unless I need to make a point. And it's, I think I've pulled the air horn three, four times in my trucking career, um, on the road, um, directed at other people. Most time it's to make them aware that, Hey, like what's going on right now is not going to work out for any of us. Uh, guy in Dallas was trying to merge into me like two weeks ago. I couldn't move. And he was driving himself straight towards concrete barriers without any sign of slowing down. So I was like hitting the air horn to be like, dude, 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 you got to stop your car, right? You need to slow down and you need to get them behind me. Cause I can't just, I can't just stop the truck right here and let you in. And that's not how this works, unfortunately. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm not trying to bully you with my truck, but that there's a certain way that these things work. And uh, so I rarely, rarely pull that air horn. Hardly ever. Uh, but I did that time. <laughs> but I did that time. Because how, how dare she lean across her seat and flip me off because she didn't uh, do her responsibility of merging into traffic. And... The more I think about it, flipping someone off is such a powerful statement. We all know what it means, right? You're going to make that statement to a guy you don't even know, you've never even met before, and you feel that strongly towards them because they didn't let you merge? Are you out of your mind? What is happening right now? Um, so I think that's a really strong statement to make towards someone. Um, the uh, Like I said, I'm trying to clean up the language a bit here, maybe appeal to a wider audience here on YouTube. Um, that is not even a statement I take lightly in a spoken word. Um, you, <laughs> I'd be hard pressed to say those words to someone. Um, but uh, words have power, you know. Uh, that is not my receiver calling, so we'll just hang up on that. Um, anyways... Uh, the nerve of this lady. <laughs> I couldn't believe her. Couldn't believe her. She's flipping me off. Um, so, uh, that was crazy. Like, look, I wish that the on-ramps were longer. I wish that people getting on an on-ramp took them more seriously and stepped on their gas when they started up the on-ramp instead of when they were towards the end of it. Because you probably avoid a whole lot of trucks if you just got, got on your gas pedal. An empty truck or a light-loaded truck I can get up, and it's not that I'm special, I just push the pedal all, all the way to the floor, but I can get that up to highway speeds most of the time before 
reaching the end of the ramp. So there's no reason that a car can't, right? Um, now loaded, that's a whole other story. But you see cars that just, like, they're just lollygagging till the end of the ramp, and then they're like, what do I do? Push the gas sooner! That's what you do! That's how this works, you know? Come on now. Um, but to blame someone else because you couldn't uh, be bothered to uh, operate your vehicle in the manner described in the handbook that you're given, uh, that's, uh, that just sounds like, uh, like uh, what am I trying to say? Just like an entitled mindset. Like, I'm getting onto the interstate. You should move out of my way. Well, pardon me. Maybe I didn't know it was you in particular, your highness. What do you want me to do for you? You know, I mean, roll out the red carpet. We're all in this together. You know, it's not like I'm just like not letting you merge because I, I want to fight with you. I have much more limited choices than you do. I cannot be slowing down this truck at every on-ramp for every person that didn't want to get their vehicle up to speed. I can't always move to the left. You know how much that's going to cost me in fuel to get this truck back up to highway speed every on-ramp I pass? No. Plus, if I'm slamming on my brakes... Um, on the interstate every time someone needs to merge and somebody runs into the back of me, normally that kind of collision is the person that's running into people in front of them. It's normally their fault, but lawyers and judges and juries, they'll stick it to the trucker every time. So if somebody slams in the back of me and they happen to have dash cam video of me smashing my brakes, there's a good chance I'm looking at a lawsuit. Just the way it goes in the in the court of law. Anytime a truck is involved, uh, it's it's a real nightmare for the truck driver, the trucking company. Um, nothing good ever comes of it. We are targets for lawsuits. <laughs> okay, so I'm off that tangent. I guess I felt like I had something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, maybe I'll try to get another cool shot out the. Uh, window later maybe with the right angle now we can kind of see that trailer swinging around as we back into our door the way we're supposed to um plus i look better when i only show half my face because like uh this side's a little weird something happened between this side and that side so i don't really know um but maybe i'll try to get a shot of that but we've done it guys we've done it yet again um delivery uh will be made and uh oh yeah dispatcher freak out <laughs> Dispatcher freaked out again today. Had to talk him down off the ledge. Um, he's very passionate. <laughs> very passionate about his job. But he called just in a panic. Josh, I'm looking at the load board for tomorrow. I don't know. I'm not sure what we can do. I'm finding one or two loads, and I'm getting real nervous about what we're going to do tomorrow. I said, wait till tomorrow. He said, well, don't you want to know what load you're taking? I said, it's President's Day, bro. Most of these brokers are probably sitting at home. Probably not booking loads. Wait till tomorrow. Calm down. <laughs> Relax, bro. We are going to get through this. So had to talk him off the ledge a little bit. Um, it's not a big deal, bro. Um, tomorrow morning, bright and early, get up, get on that load board, and let's find us something out of here. And he says, what do you want, like a two-day load? What do you want? I said, I don't care. Find me a six-day load. Let's hit the other coast, you know. <laughs> let's do what we need to do. But let's get out of the Northeast. Um, I don't mind it too much, but I do not want to spend a whole lot of time here. I am ready to head the other way. Uh, well, because that's the only option left. <laughs> Over there's ocean, and we don't want to go that way. Um, but I am ready to uh, head back down south, uh, southwest, midwest would be okay. All the way west is fine. We're starting to get into the warmer months. Uh, but that was kind of funny because he was in a panic about uh, finding a load. And I said, bro, it's President's Day. And he's like, it is? Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, anybody... Um, higher on the pay scale anywhere higher than us is uh, enjoying a three-day weekend right now. Not us, not me and you. We got stuff to do. But anyways, um, maybe I'll look at that. If this video is too long, I'll just leave it right where it is and just get it put all together and uh, sent out. But uh, if I could afford to get us a few more minutes in there, I'll try to get us a cool shot out the window. Um, just because I like it. I thought it was really cool last time I did that. So, um, and sometimes these videos are very self-serving, I guess. And I do it just for my own ego. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Uh, but we'll see. I'll talk to you guys either a little bit later today or tomorrow. I'll be here. Bye. All right, folks. What a beautiful day. What a great day. This place ain't even supposed to open till 4 p.m. It's 2.50 and they have given me a door. So here we go. Let's get up there. See how uh, 
this maybe hopefully cool camera angle works for you guys. I'm hoping it works out good. I know right now it looks a little strange. But uh, we're looking for door 28. And uh, we can get this uh, Turn truck right back on Spencer in there, Drive. I don't know why the GPS is still going off. But we can get this in there hopefully. And uh, then from there, uh, we will uh, go get our paperwork handed in. And uh, you guys don't need to follow me for paperwork. That's boring. Paperwork's for dorks, and we're not dorks around here. No, sir. No, sir. We are not. This is where all the cool people hang out on YouTube, you know? That's what I think. That's what I think. It's very niche. Very niche. But anyways, uh, I'll turn that blinker off. Driving around like an old man with the blinker still on. Oh, yard driver. He's coming for me. <laughs> he almost he came out from between the trailers. Almost took us out, boy. Oh, that would have been a that would have been a hilarious story. Anyways, let's get around here. And I'm really hoping my cool camera angle works for you guys. I, I'm really excited about it. Oh, this ain't even a hard back though. They gave me door 28 and literally every door around it is open. Um, which means I'll probably miss it like two or three times because there's nothing around me to guide me. I'll, I'll find a way to screw it up is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> but let's get over here and see. I gotta jump out when I get over there, go break the seal and uh, open the doors and all that. Of course, right? Yeah, I'm looking around. At these grocery warehouses, I always make sure that the uh, trailers in the doors have their doors open from the outside because some of these uh, places will open them uh, from the inside. But yeah, they're all open, so uh, we are good on that. I just need to open them myself. So, hope this is ex as exciting for you guys as it is for me because I was not expecting to get a phone call for another hour. I was half asleep back there and the phone rang and I thought it was someone calling to bother me. I don't like phone calls much. And it was someone that was calling to bother me, but in a more positive way. Um, they wanted to get to work on this uh, load. Here's this girl that was smiling at me earlier. So anyways, I think we'll be fine right there. All right, let me go uh, open this up. Okay, yeah, there we go. Hold on. There we go. Just got that uh, Pilot Points, baby. Free hammer. And uh, they are useful for, for breaking those metal seals. So here we go. Let's get her in there. There's another truck real close behind me. Oh, yeah, I like that angle. That looks pretty good. Oh, you know what I did? <laughs> Completely wrong door. They said 28. I'm going into 29 for some reason. So let's fix that a little bit. Told you I was going to miss it. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to miss it by a whole door, but, but I did. So anyways, here we go again. You like it? Hmm? You like it? I like it. I like it a lot. I love that angle. That's killer. I have to adjust a little bit. We'll adjust her just a little bit. Nothing too crazy. 
nothing too crazy. I used to know a guy that lived up here that uh, used to watch my old channel. Way back when it was a gaming channel, he says, you ever get up to Portland, Maine, lobster and beers on me. Never kept his number, I meant to. I could go for some lobster and beer right now though. Anybody up here wanna buy me lobster and beer? Cause I'd love that. All right, we'll have to slide her over just a little bit, but we're almost there, we're almost there. These truckers behind me, a little, little bit impatient, but I guess they probably gave everyone their door assignments at the same time because they had a bunch of uh, trucks lined up waiting behind me. I was the first one here, uh, but they probably called everyone at the same time, gave them their uh, door assignments, and so it's just a mad dash right now to get there. The sun's right in my eyes, but that's okay. Nothing to it. All right. That is... That's it, folks. That's the video for today. So, I'm going to go get this paperwork in, and uh, I will see you guys soon. Appreciate you hanging out with me. Bye now.